Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video we're going to be talking about the formation of fibrin and we're going to talk about the coagulation system as well which involves um, three main pathways, the intrinsic, extrinsic and common pathway. Um, so let's begin this video. Uh, we have the formation of fibrin which involves the production of a meshwork of insoluble protein fibers and what these fibers do is help to stabilize the hemostatic platelet plug. Now, initially, if you remember from the last video, we have a formation of a temporary plug, which is just consisting of platelets which are joined onto the subendothelium via von Willebrand's factor. Then they undergo the platelet release reaction, uh, and then more platelets will join on in a process called secondary aggregation. But that, that platelet plug which forms is only a temporary solution. We have the formation of fibrin next, which helps to stabilize and make this uh, plug a lot more stable. So uh, the blood clot itself, uh, once it's fully formed, consists of platelets, fibrin and trapped red blood cells. Now we have a system in place known as the coagulation system. And uh, this mechanism of coagulation involves the conversion of plasma fibrinogen into a solid mass of fibrin. So that's the whole purpose of this coagulation um, system. It's to in ensure that we have formation of a solid mass of fibrin to help stabilize the platelet plug so we don't lose any more blood from the uh, vessel. So we have uh, three main pathways. Uh, we have the intrinsic pathway, the extrinsic pathway, and the common pathway. So the intrinsic path pathway will uh, meet with the extrinsic pathway and form the common pathway here. And uh, they are both basically initiated by several different reasons. This is where we, the intrinsic pathway is basically due to surface contact. So if we have damage to a blood vessel, um, uh, we have plasmin which recognizes it and it initiates uh, factor 12 to be converted <coughs> into factor 12a. <coughs> Excuse me. And in the case of the extrinsic pathway, we have some form of tissue damage which leads to the formation of tissue factor which converts factor 10 into 10a. But let's talk about the intrinsic pathway first. So we have factor 12 which gets converted into factor 12a. Uh, obviously, following on from the contact of plasmin, which is a plasma protein, uh, it comes into contact with uh, a negative surface, so that could be the exposed collagen of the subendothelium, and then it initiates uh, the following processes. So it initiates the conversion of factor 12 into factor 12A. Once we have factor 12A formed, it enables uh, factor 11 to be converted into 11A. And then 11A allows the process of the conversion of factor 9 into factor 9A. Now, factor 9A enables uh, factor 10 to be converted into 10A. But it, this process here also requires uh, factor 8, uh, a platelet membrane phospholipid and calcium ions in order for factor 10 to be converted into factor 10A. So once we've reached that point, that's the intrinsic pathway done. So that's everything for the intrinsic pathway. The extrinsic pathway is a little bit different. We have some form of tissue damage, which causes release of tissue factor, which is also known as factor 7A. And this tissue factor or factor 7A also enables the conversion of factor 10 into factor 10A. So once we reach this point here, this is when these two pathways converge and form a common pathway and it begins with factor 10A. So factor 10A along with factor 5, um, another platelet membrane phospholipid and calcium ions uh, enables the conversion of prothrombin into thrombin. And thrombin enables the conversion of factor um, 13 into 13A and also enables the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin and then once we have fibrin the 13A that we just made through thrombin converting factor, thir factor 13 into 13A fibrin using factor 13A is um, used to form a stable blood clot oh, sorry a stable fibrin clot that's what we have as the end product okay so that's everything i'm going to talk about in this video uh, the good thing about this uh, youtube channel which i have is you can always um, rewind and 
re-listen to any of my explanations. If you have any questions on anything I've mentioned in today's video, just write a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond to you as soon as possible.